Over the years, I've seen a lot of weird stories stretching to make the weather a racial issue. Black Lives Matter activists chained themselves together on a runway at the London airport in 2016 because, yes, climate change kills people of color more. In fact, climate change is racist in many ways, according to this everyday feminism author. Just ask this young person of color with a somber expression in nature. She'll set you straight. It's a reality we all just need to accept or else we'll be racism deniers, just like those yokel climate deniers, according to this recent piece over at The Atlantic. It's a strange concept. Of course, different weather events would affect different races. It's just a function of who lives where and what areas are affected. Blizzards, I'm sure, disproportionately affect white people. Is that racial injustice? No, you misunderstand. Cold weather is racist against black people too. And if you wonder why, then fuck you for asking. This as astutely observed over at The Root. I really thought I'd seen the furthest stretches for victimization at the hands of fabricated weather oppression, but there's always just a little more room to stretch, isn't there? The ongoing story of a Rochester, New York weatherman shows just how far the thirst for victimization and mob justice can extend. Jeremy Kappel is, or was, an on-air meteorologist at WHEC Channel 10, the NBC affiliate station in Rochester, New York, and he has been for a little over a year now. On Friday evening, Jeremy was doing his his usual weather forecast describing a scene at the local Martin Luther King Jr. Park when he had a momentary verbal mishap. The way it looked out at Martin Luther King Jr. Park. Martin Luther King Jr. Park. Whoops. It's a funny and contextually unfortunate misspeak, sure, but come on. You'd have to be insane to take this as anything other than an innocent accident, right? Of course, but just Jeremy's luck, Rochester has a plainly insane mayor who didn't let a great opportunity to demonstrate her insanity go to waste. Her name is Lovely Warren, and jointly with the city council, she released a statement on Sunday saying it is wrong, hurtful, and infuriating that WHEC Channel 10 broadcast a racial slur in reference to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. during its Friday news broadcast. Okay, it wasn't referencing anything. It was an obvious mistake. Reference requires intent, does it not? It is beyond unacceptable that this occurred, she writes. There must be real consequences for the news personality involved and also for the management team that failed to immediately apologize and address the slur. The mayor and the city council formally called for Jeremy's firing, writing the individual responsible for the slur should no longer be employed at Channel 10, and they condemned the station for failing to apologize quickly enough, saying they only did so after being shamed on social media. And of course, Jeremy's employer, Channel 10, put up a Starbucks-level effort against these preposterous accusations of racism. They caved before the weekend was even over. They fired Jeremy on Sunday, as announced on air by the station's general manager. Meteorologist Jeremy Kappel is no longer with News 10 NBC. Our Friday broadcast does not represent the values of News 10 NBC. For his part, Jeremy has been getting his story out all week across media platforms. He and his wife are apologetic in explaining the obvious facts of what happened. And if you did feel that it hurts you in any way, I sincerely apologize. I would never want to tarnish the reputation of such a great man as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. If you watch me regularly, you know that I tend to contain a lot of information in my weathercast, uh, which forces me to speak fast. Martin Luther King Jr. came out too fast. And as that did, I crunched two words together. And I want you to think about this. First, say his name, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. five times real fast. See if it's easy for you. Hmm. Okay. Martin Luther King Jr., Martin Luther King Jr., Martin Luther Nick. Oh, jeez. He's absolutely right. Obviously, what he's saying makes perfect sense. If you speak quickly, it's easy to mix syllables from King and Junior to make a word that sounds bad. And if you spend even five minutes looking into it, you can find a lot of examples of other people doing the exact same thing. Or tomorrow, sunshine, 60 degrees, Martin Luther Co King Junior Day. We've had Martin Luther King, uh, King pardon me, sir, Martin, Martin Luther King. Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio talking football with you on this Martin 
Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. It's a mistake so obvious that Jeremy has found allies in unlikely places. Al Roker, who threw his own colleague Megyn Kelly under the bus over her Halloween blackface comments, tweeted support for Jeremy and understanding about his mistake. Even the perpetually offended Don Lemon expressed support for Jeremy. I thought that your apology was sincere. That's my opinion, and I don't understand why you were fired. Even Martin Luther King's own daughter Bernice says Jeremy should not have been fired. I don't think it should go as far in this particular instance as firing an individual. Despite the high-profile disagreement, despite Jeremy's obviously good intentions going even farther than I think he should have with an apology that was totally unnecessary, the station is doubling down on the decision to fire him, releasing a statement saying that regardless of intent, a racially derogatory utterance is inexcusable. And they hilariously make themselves the victim, saying the station has been caught in a vitriolic political debate and they'll leave the hate filled back and forth to others. What you call hate, we call legitimate criticism of your spineless decision to throw your own employee under the bus as a racist for an innocent, harmless mistake. For her part, the mayor is doubling down too, posting a video to the official Facebook account of the mayor's office, a video in which she obliviously and unironically urges empathy and understanding. So we all can develop a greater empathy and understanding for each other. I commit to speak and act with empathy. And I also ask us all to commit to treat each other with the love that Dr. King envisioned. Yeah, the empathy of smearing a man as a racist and severing his family's income because he accidentally made a sound you consider to be intolerable. Please tell me more about how much understanding you have for others. And yes, I demanded that our local media address a racist slur. I will always stand up for dignity and the worth of everyone in our community. As mayor, I am committed to working so everyone can understand how the words and images we all use or omit cause righteous anger and harm. Sometimes the hurt isn't intentional, but it is painful nonetheless. Sometimes the impact matters more than the intent. My how far we have fallen. It used to be that context and intent were everything. Those are the only reasons words make any sense at all, of course. It's a concept originally articulated decades ago, much better than I can explain myself. There is absolutely nothing wrong with any of those words in and of themselves. They're only words. It's the context that counts. It's the user. It's the intention behind the words that makes them good or bad. The words are completely neutral. The words are innocent. I get tired of people talking about bad words and bad language. Bullshit. It's the context that makes them good or bad. In this particular case, we've fallen so far that intent is irrelevant to the degree that even accidental utterance of a word is a sin to be purged. Which of course means if you do the weather forecast in Niger or Nigeria, you better be very, very careful. The old adage, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me, at least assumed malicious intent behind the words, accidentally uttered sounds can never hurt me. You would think that would go without saying. In this never-ending quest for victimhood, this exploration of the outer reaches of how to be victimized in new and creative ways, there is only one identifiable victim in this case. It is this man and his family which, by the way, includes these young children. I wish I could ask the mayor and the station leadership, can you point me to anyone specific in the Rochester area who was hurt by Jeremy's words to the degree that these children with a now unemployed father are hurt? Can anyone honestly claim that? And if you can't do that, how can you possibly make the case that this decision was just or sensible or even sane? You can't. And considering the station and the mayor have already doubled down, it's probably too late to make a credible reversal. And they're free to act according to their consciences, of course, however ideologically twisted they may be. But they can't get mad at the rest of us for not accepting their lectures against hate, preaching 
tolerance and empathy. There are only two hateful, intolerant actors in this story, the mayor and the station that bows to her grossly hypocritical whims. The pushback against them isn't hate or vitriol. It is legitimate, sound, principled criticism they'd be wise to consider carefully, just as carefully as Jeremy and every other on-air personality across the country will be pronouncing the name Dr. Martin Luther King Jr going forward. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel always. Appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter that is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to come hang out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay, bye.